Troops, we're live. Here we are again, Thursday night. The Eagle Podcast. I've got another epic guest. I've got the man behind the mask, behind the dark side, the owner, Chris Echo 3 Coffee. How are you doing, sir? I'm very well. Thank you very much. And you all right? Oh, I'm on top of the world. Um, I'm, I, love doing, I love doing podcasts. I love speaking to people who have created um, their own sort of empires or on the way to creating an empire. Um, <laughs> no <and> empires. <laughs> <laughs> or rebellions. Or, rebellions. <laughs> coffee rebellion. Yeah, coffee rebellion. <laughs> um, so for those people who don't know, you've got a very um, unique coffee shop. So let's go into that. How did it start and where's the, where's the idea come from? Um, well, it basically started when we moved to New Zealand. So I got made redundant as um, a projectionist after I finished my uh, my music de- degree. So yeah. Um, yeah, I was just working with projectors. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> obviously <laughs> use that degree well. Um, <laughs> and uh, and then yeah, we just decided let's go to New Zealand. Got family out there. Just go and do a little working holiday couple of years and yeah. lived in Wellington and absolutely fell in love with like coffee culture over there and the cafes you just couldn't get a bad cup of coffee and obviously when our time was up we came home back to Darlington and yeah <laughs> well, you, well you can get a bad cup of coffee <laughs> <laughs> well you know I think we just yeah it was just struggled to try and get that buzzers to say what we were used to over yeah. there and and then it like it got to a point where I looked into like how to roast your own and we brought loads of coffee back from New Zealand and obviously that was running out and bought a little home roaster and realized that I could get a nicer cup of coffee doing it myself and yeah five years later we thought well why can't we do it and yeah and then here we are now (laughs) when you say we who is who is we um, my partner, Helen. Right. So, is, yes. Is, is she your Chewbacca to, your, to you being Han Solo or is it the other way around? Um, well, that is, that's what I would say. <laughs> right. But the other way, uh, yeah, she'd probably say the other way around. She's the, uh, <laughs> yeah, she's definitely the Han Solo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fair enough. And obviously... Um, <laughs> The name and the, and the link to Star Wars, obviously, that's the theme that you've gone down. Yeah, um, it, I mean, like, it's not really, yeah, it, you, I mean, you've been to the shop. Yeah, it's yeah. got, it definitely does have a theme. But for me, it was just making it stand out. Well, just, it was basically a bit of personality. I mean, it's a, the two things I love is coffee and Star Wars. And I just fused them together. And, you know, I just wanted something a little bit more interesting and, Echo 3, like, the name is always just, like, stuck in my mind. When when we were over in New Zealand, we, like, talked about it, like, oh, wouldn't it be cool? And, you know, Echo 3 would make a good name because it sounds quite hipster, but then to yeah. the nerds, if, yeah. if people know what it is, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. For those who don't know what it is, go on, tell them, because it'll be... <laughs> so Echo, Echo 3 is the, um, the first line in Empire Strikes Back, which is yeah. my... Uh, Favorite film, all-time yeah. favorite Star Wars film, and a lot of Star Wars fans' film, um, favorite film as well. Yeah. And basically, the first line is Echo Three to Echo Seven. Right. Um, yeah. And Echo Three is Luke Skywalker, so it's a little, little nod to that. No, that's, that's what it's all about. <laughs> um, it's putting uh, people struggle because they don't put personality on brand. And then yeah. People can't, they can't relate to it, and obviously. In, in your coffee shop, which has now become my uh, office away from my office. Um, yeah, every Monday. Like, yeah, every Monday. <laughs> without Phil. Um, put it on the slate. <laughs> <laughs> put it on the slate. Um, <laughs> but that's, that's, that's what it's about. And a lot of coffee shops in the town, they don't have personality or, or, or they're a chain coffee shop. Yeah. Um, and that's what you've, that's what you've done. Um, you put a, a really unique brand in and your personality and you can tell, you can tell that you absolutely love the place, that it's your total passion. And it's like a second, the thing is, it's like a second home to us as well because we like done all the work ourselves in, in there and, you know, we spent a lot of time like doing it up. Yeah. It just became like a second home. We didn't have people coming in and 
then you know or do it like this and we walk away and then come back and it's finished like we put like our hearts and soul into this into the place and yeah. it just feels like when I'm there it's like it's like a second home to me as well and I, I love being there and it's just it's just a laugh I just have a laugh at work sometimes it feels wrong because <laughs> it's like I'm having too much a good time I'm like I can't believe it no so, no it's, it's great um your coffee um and I was talking to uh Becky Williamson better known in the Instagram world as eat clean Becky oh um, yeah 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 the other day and we were just saying like I was just saying how good your coffee is compared to like others um and uh, she was she was in agreement that it's 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 really really good uh where do you source the, the beans from and, and what's the process in that um well I, I, I mean, the blend that you drink, we yeah. did this like little, uh, it was like a little like coffee tasting and little roasting course when we were in, in New Zealand when my uh, parents were up on, yeah. it was like an event called uh, Wellington on a Plate, which right. is like a massive food festival. And, um, yeah. and we went there and went to this little roast, like cafe and roastery over there. And we tried loads of different coffees and from different beans and then so the coffee that you're drinking is one that we really liked when we were over there yeah and it's it's a mixture of uh columbia and papua new guinea beans which wow. just absolutely yeah which we absolutely loved and we I had, I had this little book i haven't got it with me but uh we just wrote all of these notes in and like stuff almost like we would we knew we were going to work in a coffee shop at some point and um and yeah that's and that's it so we just yeah we buy the green beans from a wholesaler and then roast roast in the shop and right. i think the freshness helps like totally oh. like super fresh I, and the I, smell helps <laughs> yeah, yeah, look, um the other day when i come in this monday just gone i could smell it all the way down clark's yard so that yeah that's a testament to, to what you're doing and i'm not sure if anyone else in that area does coffee but um I don't think it would matter because yours is just superior. Um, why is it, do you think, uh, Costa have such a pull? Because I don't mind their stuff, but it's not a patch on yours. So but, what, what, what do you think it is that they've got? Obviously, they've got millions of quid and they can throw But they don't really market that hard, do they? Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't think... No, but I think adverts. you know what you're getting from... Yeah places like Costa can't you you, you know yeah. you could go to um one in Darlington or you could go to one in Scotland and you know yeah. that you're going to get exactly the same taste exactly the same the store you know it's familiarity and stuff mm. like that and it's a safe option isn't it rather than taking a punt on a small independent shop which would actually probably be better but then it's that risk isn't it which some people don't want to yeah, take, is it? Yeah, that's that, that's a shame because um, how many more? I'm I'm not saying like you, but how many more sort of special independents out there? Um, you know, and and it does mean a lot to independents when people do come through the doors. At the end of the day, that's what's keeping the lights on. Yeah, um, but I notice with with your sort of crowd now, and I don't know if it's because Prego is shut down. The, the age range is, is, is all over the place, isn't it? Like the types of people coming in now. It's <laughs> yeah, so it's, different. It, it's, it, it's insane. Like there's no, I couldn't even put like, you know, put it down like to a, a specific demographic. It's literally from, you know, college students to uh, pensioners. Yeah. Like there's, it, you know, it, I, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't even tell you. It's just that whole age range. So I, I don't know what it is. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's the scones. It's the cheese yeah. scones, actually. <laughs> it's well. Where's got round about those cheese scones? <laughs> I, I can't see. Um, I can't see Auntie June being a big Darth Vader fan coming in and sort of starting no. putting Darth. Well, uh, no, that's it. It's that, that's what's that's what's mental. Like you know, there's you've got pensioners sat underneath a <laughs> Darth Vader helmet and you <laughs> and not not knowing what's going on. And it's and, like, well, yeah, they, it's they great. Haven't got, they haven't got a clue, have they? But Fair play to them. Um, yeah, it's probably the cheese scones. I mean, the other day there, I, I, thought, <laughs> I thought there was going to be a rerun of Brawl in Cell Block 99 when you, had, <laughs> when you said, I heard you say, yeah, sorry, the, 
the chase got whatever something had all gone and I heard it over my earphones and all I heard the woman was like but it's half nine and I was like <laughs> <laughs> wait it's human someone it's, it's, it's when you see someone like that I've got the last one and they're yeah. tucking into it and someone's like booting off that the the last thing <laughs> gone's gone and this person's looking so shifty trying yeah. to eat this gone it's like yeah it's, it's mad but but that's it and yeah you just can't can't how that's how it goes how was <laughs> how was new zealand it's a place i haven't been but it's a place i definitely want to go it is the most beautiful country you've ever been to like i've ever been to it's just it's like the lakes on steroids and <laughs> it's great it's so good it's like <laughs> it yeah like the scenery the people the culture like obviously the coffee and yeah I'm, i miss it like i totally miss it and we get a few kiwis that come into the into the cafe and yeah ben oh i do know him i don't know, I can't remember his surname ben um oh. kiwi ben Ki- yeah let's call him kiwi <laughs> yeah kiwi ben yeah that's him he comes in um and he comes in wearing an all blacks t-shirt and uh <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Jake the Hook, Jake the Mass. Of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, like it's and, and for me that's like the biggest like compliment that you know the Kiwi the Kiwis come back because that's like for me that's why I wanted it to be just like the coffee that I, I was used to in New Zealand the service the yeah. you know down to the just the cups and making sure everything's in the right the right cups and and just yeah. And and that's great. And but New Zealand is just it's some country. So yeah, it, it, to be fair, it does look amazing, um, especially sort of the mountains and stuff like that, Mount Doom and all that. There's a reason. Oh yeah, there. yeah. We lot, um, lot yeah, we. I remember having a let off the. Um, we had like this really rubbish Toyota Starlet. We had a bit of a road trip, and yeah, we went past. It, I think it's like on the on the desert and um, it's like a desert road. I remember learning how to, uh, you know, let all of the the steam and the water out of this knackered radiator with a massive towel. We had to keep stopping every like half an hour because the uh, car was overheating. So I learned a lot on that trip. That, that's, a, that's, <laughs> how it was, that, uh, that's adventure. But uh, then people would stop and help you. And it's just, that's what the people are like over there. It's, it's yeah, great. That's, there's, there's still that culture. There's still people willing to help people. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. How, what was your, res- did you have any sort of like reservations, you know, when you sort of like, opening a small outlet in Dalton and obviously um, sort of a few other people I've had on the podcast we've talked about the town centre and yeah. where, do you see that, where do you see the town centre going? Um, well I mean yeah there's, there's been a lot of closures in the town centre which is you know which is bad but I think all of these people are like you know we're getting a lot of independent places that are popping up and yeah, we, I mean, there's a lot of cafes, there's a lot of competition in that side of stuff. But you know, it's becoming like a little, it's becoming like a little hub, and it is starting to thrive. I think. And yeah. I think people are, yeah, it will start changing, but you know, it's quite, it's, it's just all of the closures. I think that's put a negative side of it. But there's a lot going on. I think without that. Yeah, it, it's almost like um, it's almost coming back to. I'd like to say the early 90s, even though I was only about seven. Um, but small sort of family-run independence doing well. And then all of a sudden, these big chains came in and then they monopolised it. And then we're supposed to feel sorry that the big chains aren't doing good anymore. Yeah. Um, and I, and I kind of just feel like everything, you know, everything has its moment in the sun. And it, you're as relevant as you make yourself. Um, and it blows my mind. There's a lot of sort of, big companies that aren't even on social media now and I'm like how how, how is that even a thing like yeah um, I, I'm not here to throw anyone under the bus but I'm gonna um, <laughs> <laughs> so up, I'll use up and running as a prime example um that's just closed down sort of near you and I, oh and yeah I, yeah and I knew someone who worked in there but they, they didn't do anything on social media and it's like you are a visual business yeah um you need to let people know, build a client base and say, oh, we've got all these new great offers coming in. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. start do things with Instagram and stories. And you've got a great video of, of the stormtrooper stood in your, in, your, in, your, in your cafe waiting to get served. Oh, Adrian. He's yeah. an absolute ledge. <laughs> yeah, that, like, he, he rocked up one day, you know, just like that, out the blue. 
<laughs> yeah, just I, I couldn't believe that. I tell you what, a lot of people learned about Stormtrooper outfits in that uh, in that short space of time that you come in. I don't yeah. even think Helen knew how much I knew about Stormtrooper uh, armor. <laughs> like, but the thing is, if if you're not from Dartmouth and for whatever reason you're a coffee lover or whatever, and you and all of a sudden as you're doing Instagram, you that falls in your feed. You're like, what is going on here? Do you know what I mean? Like. That is what they call a thumb stopping moment, and then yeah, yeah, something like that, <laughs> like on Star Wars, like that sort of outfit. How much are you talking for that? Like, what's he, what's he paid for that? Or in the region of, well, I can tell you what I paid for one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, I think mine cost mine cost six hundred. Wow. But it is it is like it's it's still proper. You can wear it. You know, it's all like proper plastic and stuff like that. But. And um, his is worth, I think his is a lot more because it's from the same like Shepard and Studio. So I think wow. his, his would be like a grand's worth of stuff. He had like all the, all the gear and like what? decent helmets and stuff like that. So what, one thing I could never work out um, as a casual fan of Star Wars, not, not to the level that you guys are running at, but <laughs> why, why are these stormtroopers so bad at shooting? <laughs> like, well, fund- fundamental. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Right. So there's a couple of things. Um, there's bits that I've read that obviously they're so bad at shooting because they did. They needed to escape from the Death Star. They needed to take the Falcon out, yeah. so that then Vader and all of them could know where the secret Rebel base was because it could put oh. a tracker on the on the Falcon. So if they shoot him and kill him, then. And they're not going to go, they're not going to get out, and they're going to do it, are they? So, they're that bad at shooting, so, so they're they can made... escape. Yeah, no, no, it's, uh, it's, it's fair enough. So, <laughs> um, I just, I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's, the, it's the marksmanship here is terrible. Like, um, <laughs> apart, from the, apart from the new one, um, well, one of, the, one of the new ones, was it? Um, I, I'm going to probably murder this Captain Captain Fantasmic or something like that. Like that was, uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, that yeah. was someone off Game of Thrones, wasn't it? Yeah, Gwendolyn Christie. Oh, there you go, Brianna yeah, Tarth. Brianna Tarth. You get to, if she's not defeating the the the, the dead spoilers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, spoiler bad of the cafe. Yeah. No, yes. no. <laughs> um. So yeah, going back to the sort of high street, what yeah. what would you like to see? Sort of, I don't know who who do you get involved with? Is it the Love Darlington project? Is it the ta- is it the council? What more do you think needs to be done? Um, I think you know, like the the Love the Love Darlow is great. I mean, they they put on like loads, and they're always you know helping out the the independent businesses, aren't they? Yeah. Um, I think I think just you know, all, all like the little guys. I think we just you know, need to look after each other um, more than anything. Um, and yeah, just, just more, more little shops, more like unique shops, I think, to get more people into the town. Yeah, more, more bespoke, like the, like, yeah. the way, like the way you've gone with sort of, um, sort of subject matter experts in their field, do you know what I mean? Like I, I'll go to a shop where I, I can't remember the last thing I bought offline because I, the times I've ever done it, I've always ever bought like junk. Do you know what I mean? Or it's come all the way from China. It's like, oh, cheers. Oh, man. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah. I used to waste so much money doing that. Just little leads. Oh, yeah. well, I need that lead and I'll get this. <laughs> and, then I, and then I'm like, why have I wasted a load of money on like an uh, adapter that I didn't need? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, 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 it's a never ending pit. Um, and I've made that um, silly mistake of watching one um, animation thing on YouTube today. And now my entire feed is like literally. Yeah. That's all it like, takes, isn't it? Oh, I'm like, oh, you even have to talk it? about it sometimes and then it can pick it up, can't it? Yeah, that is mental. <laughs> you can literally, sometimes it's almost full black mirror where you think about a certain thing and then you're yeah. going out of social media and we'll go on to social media actually. And all of a sudden you're like, hang on, wasn't I, wasn't I just thinking this? And, and we've talked in the shop about Chernobyl. And yeah. Like literally, I have never ever seen so much stuff about Chernobyl in my entire life now in my timeline because like I, I think I googled it and just thought I thought oh, oh well, yeah. a little bit more but now I'm getting like full come on the full like reactor 4 package deals you know what I mean like <laughs> is it safe? 
<laughs> define the word safe. Um, <laughs> yeah, like it's yeah, tech technology, man. It's just it's unreal. But um, like going back to the social media, what you're saying and stuff yeah. like that, that's the hardest thing I find though. Being like a business owner is keeping on top of it. What? Why? Why do you think that it's, is? It's like a, a you know total. No, I'm I'm thirty. Well, I'll be thirty three this year, so yeah, you know, I'm getting there. Getting but, there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But um, I think I don't have time on my own, like because you know I, I run the shop a lot on my own, and you know just um, yeah, it's a big it's a big thing, just like grabbing a photo, trying to quickly do a post, and you know then then I'll get interrupted, then I'll forget about it. Next thing I know, it's the end of the day. I've missed that you know that post for that day, and it's just. Yeah, it's, I just find it quite hard, and I know that there's things out there to schedule it, but then it's having that library of, you know, images and what to think and what to do, and it's, yeah, yeah and it, I, I think I find social media the hardest thing about a business, just keeping on top of it. And, and the thing is, social media itself has now become a multi-million pound, billion pound entity, and yeah. sort of, it's almost worth it if you can afford it and and even if you even if you it's a struggle to pay a social media company to do your social media for you um, yeah because if they're any good they they pay for themselves and then some do you know what i mean like that's yeah, the yeah. <laughs> that's the predominant goal um and it's sort of the way that i definitely want to go um because you know outsource and give it to someone who's an expert at it and you just concentrate on what you're good at now i think as small business owners you have to wear a lot of different hats, don't you? You know, you have to do. Yeah, that. I've definitely tax, found that. Yeah, the yeah. tax man, um, customer relations, um, quality control, you know, paying yourself a wage, blah, yeah. blah, blah, all the rest of it. Um, and and that's sort of like, oh, yeah, social media. Like, it's quite easy for me because I've got a very super visual business. Do you know what I mean? And I don't, yeah. mind, and I don't mind a cheeky live video. Um, <laughs> but, but for some people, it's not their thing. Um, where do you think social media will be or technology in general in say, I don't know, let's be crazy, say 2030? 2030. Well, you know, what? I've just watched that Black Mirror the other day where it's yeah, the yeah. all about the ratings. Um, oh, right. Okay. So, you know, when you, you rate a person and stuff like that. And oh, you... from the, yeah, that was, that was too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, Oh, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we're not far from, we won't be far from that. That is bizarre. Where you, you're getting houses on yeah. <laughs> your rateability, which, you know, like, you, you watch these things and, you know, we've discussed before in like, the shop and stuff like yeah. that, but like, you know, it's, I think the, the, way, the, the way it makes you feel is that we're, we're so close to, to that in, in real life. Do you think, um, I, I'm a big fan of social media, but I do believe, like everything else, there is a force of good and there is a force of bad on there. Yeah. I mean, um, well, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm not a big fan of Facebook. I just, there's so much to trawl through and so much like adverts and targeted ads and all of that. But like, the thing I like about Instagram is it's like straight up, you know, you've got a picture, quick comment. That's it. I want to see that more of that place. Yeah. Um, a little, a little video. I think I'd, pr I'd prefer to have that social media. I hope that develops more than the whole, you know, status and like what, what Facebook is. Yeah. yeah um, it's, I, I'm sort of intrigued to see where it's going to go. And I don't know if social media will have its day because everything has its day. The radio is having its day. The yeah. TV's having its day. DVDs, VHS had the day. Um, there is always something coming to replace what's the now. But when you sort of think of social media, I think, well, what could replace that? Do you know what I mean? Like, what, what could replace it? But I, I'm not going to rule nothing out because I, I literally... We've got full circle and we'll talk to each other again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can you imagine that? Um, well, but here's, here's the social experiment for you. So when we first, um, when we first opened, um, we didn't have the internet in the cafe because there was, wow. a, fire, there was a fire down the bottom of um, uh, Skinnergate, the St. Yeah. T's building. Yeah. And that blocked access so that Virgin couldn't actually come up and, you know, connect us. So yeah. we had um, a few months. And honestly, people, like, especially on the opening day and, like, the couple of weeks into it and a couple of months, people talk to each other. 
So you had you had like strangers sitting next to each other and just chatting and talking and going back to what it was and no one like you know there was just they had something in common that they were sat having a coffee and that was it and yeah and people just started talking and it was it was amazing and I I, I said that a couple of times just like you know this is this is great that you know you got strangers just making conversation with each other that wouldn't normally talk I I mean yeah I mean I get like for me I I come in to do um, my, my business stuff so I am literally headphones in and, yeah. and, 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 and try and get done but I do think it's important like we are losing the ability to communicate and it's funny because we crave gratification of people who we don't know yeah. or have never <laughs> spoke to but we wouldn't we wouldn't dare have a conversation with the person sat there next to us and I, and, and I find it weird I do I find it very very weird that people have almost um, our greatest thing in this what's sort of um, distinguishing us from animals is the fact that we can verbally communicate with each other. Because yeah, absolutely. I'm telling you now, if the lions could talk like us, <laughs> we'd, be, <laughs> we'd be in trouble. Yeah. You know I mean? we, we would be in trouble. This is the thing. And then, that, we, then, that's the, uh, then that's who you'd want to be in with, wouldn't it? Yeah. Going back to the... Yeah, going know. back. <laughs> that's what you'd want to be in. You'd be like, I'm with the lions. I'll, I'll show you. I'll talk about social media. I got sent a video today of a tiger chasing these two guys in India on a bike. And right. let me tell you, it's the greatest, most scariest video because this tiger means business. <laughs> I mean, this tiger's like, if I get you off that bike, you two are in trouble. You're toast. Um, oh, my word. It is, it is new. <laughs> the look in the tiger's eyes is like, wow, that. That is not Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. That, that is, <laughs> he's gone f- full Shia Khan on. on, on. <laughs> he's, he's, he's ramped up. Um, <laughs> yeah, so do you do um, a lot of advertising on social media or, or, or are you sort of happy with where you are with it and websites and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, I mean, there's not like advertising as such, you know, there's not really much we can advertise, I'd say, because we obviously we don't have stuff to sell apart from the coffee. So people know that we're a coffee shop yeah. they're coming for coffee. So I just try and put up as many pictures as I can of latte art, which I'm getting quite, quite good at. Oh, you, you, <laughs> you, yeah, I've come on leaps and bounds over the last year, honestly. Is, I that look the it. Is that the hashtag? Is it latte art? Latte art, yeah. yeah latte art. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good old hashtag. Um, yeah, here's, a, here's a Star Wars question for you. Go on. What would uh, what would Darth Vader be? What's his, he, he's gone um, black and he coffee black. That's it. Bosh. Ah, he's got to surely. He'd, yeah. you know, he doesn't want chocolate. Sp- you'd be like chocolate sprinkles. No, I don't think so. No, straight. Yeah, straight up. Yeah, it'll, it'll just be. Oh, I'll have a, I'll have an espresso. Straight yeah. up. I think that'll be it. Yeah, it's been. It's no, been you'll a long have two. Day. You'll have two of them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the stormtroopers can't shoot for shit. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Sick of telling them. So, sort of away from the coffee shop, how does yeah. life work? How do you manage it? How do you balance being a business owner? Obviously, you're a keen movie goer um, uh, and a family guy. How does it work? Oh, mate, it's it was the most difficult thing like we did because when we first opened we were doing seven days stupidly and wow. like because obviously we didn't know how it was going to work and what were going to be the best day so we thought yeah we'll do seven days and we just got a, a puppy in that time so oh, wow. so we got like um we had a dog and i think that was the hardest thing trying to because when we got when we got the dog like when we got milo our dog we didn't think we were going to be opening a cafe and then obviously we did and then yeah that was the hardest thing just trying to fit everything around it like it was hard it was really hard really tough i mean you, you know you have your arguments you have like you're just sleep deprived and i think we've definitely got into a routine now and it's and we still we still get yeah we do we do loads of stuff i've got every evening free and that's the best thing like i never yeah. used to because i used to work in bars and yeah. worked at the music center and um i taught piano as well so be, oh, the right. five the five years before i um we opened this when we come back from New Zealand. I taught piano and worked at the Borough Music Centre. Cool. And um, so I was doing that. So I was working nights and 
then teaching during the day, which was good. And then obviously I got, it just got too much like working every Friday, Saturday nights mm. and open a cafe. And, you know, I'm doing from seven till three or seven till four. And at, what? But every evening it's great. What, once you opened that cafe, was that it? Was that it? Was that your main skin in the game? As in, like, that was the breadwinner straight away? Or did you still do a little bit of other work to sort of come um, in? So I, I stopped teaching the, the schools. I did the schools a couple of days. And then I, I kept on my private pupils that I had. Yeah. And then, you know, the, the more the cafe was doing well, the busier we got. And then I had to stop doing the teaching until I've just stopped altogether now. And... Wow. I've got, yeah, it was sad, obviously, you know, stopping teaching because uh, I, I like, I love the, the kids and the families that I, I taught, but yeah, the cafe just took over and, and now we've got, we've got a good balance now. So it's great. So I can still go to band practice, go and watch movies, you know, go, go for some beers and just have a good, good time. Fair play to you, man. That's, that's a good one. And, um, how do you manage the books? Have you got an accountant? Do you do it yourself? Are you self-taught? What's the dance? Well, that's where Helen comes in, right. the hero. So <laughs> she's she's a teacher. So she ah, she yeah. she comes in and works on a Saturday. Yeah. And then um, and she does all the behind the scenes stuff. So she's got really good at it. And yeah, I mean it's it's difficult at some bits, but she yeah she's done a done a really good job. So I wouldn't be able to do it without her. So yeah, no, it's um. It's an important balance. Uh, movies. Let's talk about movies. I know you're a big movie fan. Yeah. Um, I'll, Just, I'll put you on the spot. Uh, which Which is your greatest movies? Top five. Top five greatest movies. Whoa. Bloody I'll, hell. And, then I'll, and then I'll tell you mine. We'll go. What, we'll tell you what. We'll go like for like. So number five for you. Shit. <laughs> I've got, I've got this. I'm, I'm sat in front of you. I know, it's an impressive, <laughs> it's an impressive oh, man. collection. See, I do love it. I do love it. I do love the alien films. Ah, uh, well, yeah. Uh, would I go, would I choose aliens? Oof. So it is good. Yeah. Man, this is so hard. I hate it when, like, when. Yeah, when, well. I'll, it's, it's just, uh, yeah. Well, I'll, why don't we do it in genres? Well, I'll, tell you what, I'll go first. For me, number five is Commando. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. I, have, I, absolutely, I absolutely love Commando. Um, yeah. Number four, um, Predator, the first one. Right, Classic. okay. So you're keeping it. Are these all going to be on it? No, no, they're not. They're not, they're not they're the not next all. one is Twins. No, no. And it's... <laughs> no. Jingle uh, all the way. <laughs> jing, jingle all the way. Uh, number three, Aliens. The second yeah. one. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. It's an absolute classic. Um, number two, Alien, because that is groundbreaking filmmaking, horror, sci-fi. Um, and I'll tell you a little funny story. Um, my dad uh, sort of doesn't read too well. And back in the day when that first came out, um, he went to the pictures and he thought he was going to see a movie called Alan. <laughs> 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 and oh. and, and uh, yeah, he, he went to see it, and uh, yeah, it wasn't Alan. Um, <laughs> he sat through what was a pretty intense sci fi horror. Yeah, imagine that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then, God, what's top? What's top? Uh, this is proper cheesy, but uh, Jaws. <laughs> I love Jaws. Jeez. So they're all similar vibes, then, yeah. like, in a way, yeah. aren't they? They've all yeah. got. I mean, I mean there's, a few, right. there's a few sort of spin-offs but I just love them all from that era it just feels like it's that's where it all originated for every single thing oh, I've got yeah. a bit of a sort of um, I do like Tremors I do like yeah, yeah yeah I'll give you that that's good I mean I, I like I, I was totally into like um, like zombie horrors yeah as well like when I was a lot younger and I loved um, I think I loved like yeah I'd probably say you know, you got the Dawn of the Dead, like the George Romero stuff. Like, I mean, yeah. I just, I probably watched too much of that. And I'd probably say, actually, Day of the Dead was probably one of my favourites. The one where they're in the underground bunker. I don't know whether you've ever yeah. seen it. Yeah. Um, is that like your classic 80s horror? Yeah, like ch mega cheese. But yeah. like, yeah. And, and then like the Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2, absolutely. I, I, 
I remember sort of, I tell you what sort of caught me off guard is I think the new It's a really good, like the first one I thought was really sort of creepy. Um, yeah. And sort of like, I don't, ugh, like a, that sort of vibe. And I like that, um, um, oh, the, it's that good, I forgot the name, where you couldn't speak, where they did the whole movie in silence. Um, the, was it called The Quiet Ones? Where they were just the whole, they were quiet. Oh, into, um, Every, yeah, it was, oh, no, I know which one you mean. Yeah, it was John Krasinski, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a really good movie. Um, and Bird, I quite like Bird Box as well, which was a similar thing. Yeah. Where they couldn't see, could they, they couldn't, weren't allowed to look at them. I mean, uh, sort of, I, there's, some, there's some movies that probably, like, I, I can't do, I can't do gore. Like, I can do gore if it's, like, a purpose to be behind it. Oh. But if it's just gore for, like... Gratuitous. <laughs> it's, like... <laughs> I can't. Oh, I need all of all the gore, please. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Um, yeah, like that's that's why I love like like all like the Evil Dead's and like you know the you know the uh, anything zombie like where it's just like a s- splat fest. Yeah, like, right. Well, uh, like the Ash versus the Evil Dead, like the the spin-off TV series. I love that just because uh, it was just over the top. Like, like I I, I get it. Uh, I get it in sort of when um, it's like a Viking thing or it's a Roman thing. Like if we go to war with swords, then things are going to get cut off. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's just how it is. But I think like for me, the, the the torture stuff, like whenever I really struggle like to watch torture stuff, I'm like, right, hostile. I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I think I'm done. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, in fact, yeah, like, I mean, some of that like got like, especially the Saw films, they just got ridiculous. Like the first one was, I, I really like the first one. It's clever, you know. Yeah, yeah the but, first one was clever, really clever. Yeah. Like it was an interesting movie, and then it was almost became like, how, like, how can we push this? Yeah, how can we like, push this? And who is this guy who can build these unbelievable feats? <laughs> <in the news? laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And no one noticed, but like it just got to the point where I was like. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm done with this now. Because <laughs> we've we've gone yeah. um, we, we've gone too far. Um, I watched a, a movie called Have you seen Green Inferno? That's a weird movie about no. the. Uh, it's a. Who's the guy behind Hostel? Um, oh, um, Eli Roth. Yeah, it's an Eli Roth movie where a lot of sort of tree huggers go into the forest to sort of stop this big corporation from cutting yeah. down trees. And then the plane crashes, and the and obviously they crash in the Amazon, um, and like they get they get captured by this like um, the Amazonian tribe, and it just goes downhill from there in a <laughs> bad way. There's some there's some bad deaths on there. I'm like, oh wow, man, this is yeah, this is took a this is took a turn. It was one of those sort of like, oh, you might like this because I watched that movie with Daniel Radcliffe when he played the guy who survived in the jungle for like um, a few months, like a month on end. He's he went trekking with someone and they got lost and he ended up surviving in the jungle on his own. I can't remember the name, but it's a really good movie. It's sort mm. of like, it's sort of flown under the radar a little bit, but it was a classic. And then, because I watched that, I was like, oh, you made like this. And I was like, all right. And then I'm like, wow, this is a million miles away from all Danny Radcliffe this. So have you got a favorite horror and um, a favorite comedy then, would you say? Yeah, but it's, again, um, it would be, ah, oh, favorite comedy. What, I'll, I'll tell you what my favourite comedy is that I could keep watching Happy Gilmore yeah <laughs> that is my go to yeah. film uh, if I just want and, uh, Ka- uh, and, Carl, and Carl Weathers is in it um, Carl Weathers is in it yeah <laughs> um, you like that it's Predator <laughs> yeah it must have been at that time <laughs> Dylan I quite like um, uh, sort of Caddyshack and stuff like that Porky right. like yeah that. yeah yeah old school <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of <laughs> and I tell you what, uh, an awesome movie, Blues Brothers. That's that's like, yeah, that's, that's underrated as well. I lo- lo- love that. Well, it's not underrated at all, but it's you know it's got some proper funny mo- like funny parts, and it's yeah. Pop- like I mean, yeah. I-, I think if you want to sort of genre, then like horror. Mm, don't know with horror. Sort of, it's a bit, it's a bit weird. Um, I like Constantine, but that's not really horror, is it? That was a good no. movie. I, I wish they did more of them. Um, anything with Keanu Reeves is normally bang on, really, especially like somehow they've managed to make three John Wicks out of some guy still in his car and killing his dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's been photos for Bill and Ted 3, haven't there? So, oh, wow. Very exciting. So yeah, that'll Bill be good. And, Bill and Ted. And then there's, a new, uh, there's another new Terminator movie. Like, 
Uh, the first two. Yeah. Actually, yeah, number two, number two Judgment Day. Yeah, that, that's probably up there. It's one of, one of um, my favourite films. And uh, even, the, even the first one, even the first one's mm. class because, again, it's sort of like pushing the boundaries on what was possible. Um, and Arnie just played probably one of the most iconic, greatest bad guys ever. Just Yeah, he, absolutely. Didn't really even speak, did he? Just walked around and said, I can Boom. That's it. <laughs> it's just, just absolutely class. Um, but yeah, sort of like that that genre, the the 80s Hulk. Do you know what I mean? Like the, all that sort of stuff, I think. Yeah. So I, you, I you're the, pro, you've got like, you, you, so you're down with the 80s basically, aren't you? Just anything yeah, from the 80s. Yeah, 80s and 90s. And then sort of, um, obviously there's classics like um, the first Matrix. Is, yeah, which is being re-released in 4K. So there you go. Oh, wow, that'll be... Um... <laughs> well, that's a testament because I watched it not so long ago and it still holds up now, so that's how good the special yeah. effects were back then. It was, uh, it was yeah. an epic... Uh, that was Actually, an epic... yeah, like there's, there's certain films that do stick, stick up, don't they? Like that and Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah it still Jurassic looks good Park, now. Um, Titanic, still, yeah. still amazing. Um, there's some other movies which, which, do, which really don't hold up, and I'll tell you one... Which is a great movie as well. First Robocop. Oh. Great <laughs> movie. Absolutely. Yeah. Like how many classics have come from that? Like just just brilliant. Um I I love the first it's really violent as well, isn't it? Like yeah, really, brutal. Really what he gets his, yeah, he gets his hand shot off, doesn't he? Yeah, he gets, yeah, it's proper, absolutely mental. Yeah. Within like the first five minutes, yeah, and uh, carry on uh, <laughs> carry on carry on making <laughs> making movies like that. Um Awesome, right? Let's uh, let's start to sort We've of close things. On down. A tangent, have we? <laughs> yeah, we're what, what do I do again? I, here's coffee, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So we start to close down the show now, and I always end the show with the five what's. So the first yeah. one, uh, what's the greatest advice you've been given? Right. So, and this this one of our good mates. He's a musician, Mighty Roberts. Uh, yeah. He's a Dalo boy. You know, he's killing it down in London. Down the you know, smoke. Down the smoke, you know. Plays uh, yeah, plays trumpet. Like, unbelievable jazz player, composer and everything like that. And the one thing I always remember him saying, because we played in bands together and stuff like yeah. that, and he went, if you're the best person in the band, you're in the wrong band. And that's always stuck wow. with me. <laughs> and I've gone, do you know what? That's like, you know, you can apply that to anything. And... You know, that's, yeah. Like, and it's like, right. You know, there's always someone that, you know, you can always bet yourself. You can, you know, that's it. Like, don't have an ego. <laughs> yeah. I, I think no, that's, that's a great, one, great. one thing that's always popped up. If you're so, the yeah. best person in the band, you're in the wrong band. Yeah. Well, I'm going to write Good, that. Good, isn't it? <laughs> um, second one, what's on your bucket list, either personal or business? Um... Per, well, person, I know I've already done it, but I do want to get back to New Zealand within yeah. you know ten years of being back, and I want to get myself over to uh, Comic Con as well at some point. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just want to go in and you know embrace it and and go there. And where's where that? Is it in Vegas or is it? In like San Diego. San Diego. I want to go, yeah, because I love, I love San Diego. I like the idea of going over there because I love all like, um, Blink One Eight Two is one of my favorite bands. So I love that yeah. like. You know, pop punk and that whole surf yeah. lifestyle, and yeah. you know, skater, and yeah, and then obviously, yeah, I'd love to get to Comic Con at some point, like the proper one. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a fair point. Um, third one. This is always an interesting one. What's been your toughest day, business, personal, whichever one you want to cover? My toughest day was probably, like, looking back on it, was like in a business level was the first you know, the first week of doing the coffee shop on my own. Right. I, I like, I'd shit my pants doing it again now. <laughs> like, going back, looking back on it, like, and yeah, like, it was, it was super tough. But then it wasn't, if you know what I mean, because it was all like, it was new, it was like the honeymoon period and stuff like that. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, it was, it was so tough that first week, but, but good. And, um, and yeah, I'd probably like, on a personal level, you know, 
like I'll say this like in when I was in New Zealand I used to work before I worked in like a cafe when I was over there I worked at this uh, South African shop and um like I it was all right but then like I I got to a point where I just I hated it like the you know it was a bit like what it was was uh yeah just the owners were it, yeah, was, it wasn't the greatest like you know it wasn't the greatest job. working thing and and yeah. stuff like that and I remember like you used to just walk to work just quite how can I avoid going in there like what is if something's going to happen to me because as well I've, I've told this to a couple of people like but like one of my jobs <laughs> when I went in there was uh <laughs> this is gonna sound mental like it was like a deli so like they had like yeah. loads of like um like cured meats and stuff like that yeah. like big things of salami and stuff oh. and, and things like that so <laughs> so one of my first jobs when I went in on morning was I used to go in grab a couple of tea towels I had to get pick up each one of these salamis and like wipe <laughs> wipe these salamis with a with a uh, with a tea towel because like they just yeah. use like all the like the oils and that and I'd be sat there oh. stood there in this deli in New Zealand going what is what what am I doing like just wiping these I'm wiping like, rub, rubbing rubbing down salamis and and like cured sausages and I remember just like yeah there was one one time I just went went on my break and never went back He's, yeah, the best thing still, I've ever done. The tea towel's still there with the salami still there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. like, Where's Chris? Yeah. Oh, was, it, was super, it was super tough. You know, when you're like, oh, what am I doing? Like, why am I going here? Why am I feeling like this in this country? I'm here to have a good time. This is super tough. Like, <laughs> why am I rubbing salami down with a tea towel? Why am I rubbing salami down with a tea towel? This is, this is weird. <laughs> I thought it was a kind of sick joke. Yeah, no, it's fair enough. Um, <laughs> this, is, uh, this, is, uh, this is another cracker. Um, what's been your happiest day? My happiest day. Um, it's it's always a hard hard one because I, I don't know. Like, I couldn't when when you ask me, it's like I don't know. I think I think I'd probably say like because my when my niece was born, she had like a. Um, a problem with a heart so she was in like intensive care up in like uh newcastle and, yeah, yeah and stuff like that and then i think i'd probably say hearing getting that phone call saying that everything's all right and she's allowed to come home after two weeks of being in like you know not knowing what was going to happen and then and then like hearing that i'd probably say that was probably one of the most most happiest days just just cool. knowing that but i'm hoping that there's you know, there'll be there'll be other ones as well, but I think that's the one that sticks out. Fair enough. Um, yeah. Last one, final what? Uh, what's next for Echo Three Coffee? What's next for Echo Three Coffee? Well, as you know, we're only we're only in our first year. We just got over yeah. our first year, so I want to just make sure that we just keep, you know, just keep standards going for. A, and, and just keep doing what we're doing for the next year and you know I, I, I think sorry just just jumping in I Go think um if you opened a place up in Durham you'd absolutely smash it smash it I know a lot a lot of people say like have said you know are you gonna open up are you gonna expand but we've got to re like we've got to remember you know we're this is working and we're doing well what we're doing because yeah. of the size of the shop you know at the moment, I can run it on my own. I can, yeah. I can keep up, you know, keep up the standards and, you know, get another year under our belt. Yeah. And after that, we can just like completely, you know, think of like, get, get like a new blend, get new coffee, you know, get yeah, new, new ideas and oh, fair play. You know, change, start like changing, you know, then we can like change the seat and change, you know, get stuff started yeah. get a bit more comfortable get we could even get outdoor seating and you know just just improve it but i think i just want to get get out of this danger zone of you know just you know keep building our reputation and keep doing what we're doing because at the moment it's working and that's been it and that's a that's a fair that's a fair one chris um and that will sort of close us off nicely um ladies and gentlemen um i want to say thanks very much to chris he's been an absolute star um some might say death star 
Chris, oh, um, you've been waiting for that one. Yeah. I, saw you write, I saw you writing it down. Fire, fire, fire the beam. Um, Chris, where can people find you on social media? Social media. So we're on Instagram, uh, um, Echo 3 Coffee. We're on Facebook under the same handle. Um, and yeah, that's it. We are on Twitter, but I need to sort that out. So as yeah, we yeah. discussed earlier, I think that for doing... those people who are coming into Darlington, how do they find you? Where, where, where do they find you? Rebel base? My rebel base is secret, so you won't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is, uh, we're in Clark's yard, um, yeah. which is right in the centre of yeah. one of the many yards just off Skinner Gate. Brilliant. Um, yeah. It's Brilliant. Great. Get, get on down. Check us on Google. We're on Google as well. Google. Yeah, Maps. yeah. Everyone's you on You can have a little look around in, on that. We've yeah. got that thing where you can go in oh, the shop cool. and go and look around 300. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that's been Chris from Echo 3. Uh, he's been outstanding. Um, so a few things to take away from that, which I have wrote down, is if you're the best in the band, you need to get a new band. And if you're currently wiping down salamis or any sort of cold meat <laughs> with a rag, um, you won't put on this earth to do that. So go, go and chase your dreams, man. Stop being afraid. Um, Next week on the show, I'm very privileged to welcome um, Debs North. Debs is on an absolute solo mission to improve access for people with disabilities in the, in the great outdoors. Um, I had the pleasure of uh, meeting her in person when we did Glen Cafra back in March. She's an absolute rock star, so uh, we'll speak to her next week. Chris, thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank I you very much. Monday. Yeah, absolutely. L ladies and gentlemen, that's been Eagle Podcast. Good night.